good idea. It was and I still a humbling today, moment, for example, to be approached on with great respect uh, and preparation. We had also learned where One to stand. One of my classmates decided was from South grave. Korea, so you don't when fall in. When it was in, his turn, he read the a burial service perfectly. We also Every word learned how to hold a baby during exactly. baptism. Every so it doesn't fall into the place where it was supposed to be. We were also he required had finished, for the first time the professor to told stand him well behind done. an altar and, and say then the words he asked of him if he would like to do the prayer again. Even though we knew this time it didn't in Korean. count, if you will, if it wasn't, it it wasn't real. And for real, those of us listening, because it was we a weren't old experience, it was still a the words humbling flowed moment so beautifully to be approached and powerfully. With great respect that it was and clear that there was no mistake that the Holy One of my Spirit was there was from that South student. Korea. When it was his the turn, prayer, he read the prayer of consecration one perfectly. he understood. Every word was pronounced exactly. Which is exactly what happens when we give the gift it was supposed to be. of hearing the word when of Jesus Christ. When he had Christ finished, the professor language, told him, well done. People absolutely understand. And then he asked him if he would like to do the prayer Today, again. Today, there is a lot of importance this time placed in not Korean. only in our diocese, he did. But throughout and the for Episcopal those of Church us listening, and in other do denominations, experience, that the languages the words we need to remember so beautifully and powerfully talk to people are that not it was clear that there was no mistake that the Holy Spirit was there. We with need that to student. consider things that people he was find the prayer valuable, in his things own that language. matter to people. One he things understood that motivate people and was comfortable these days with are the languages which we need is to exactly find what happens to them when we give find the gift the spirit of hearing word of Jesus Christ. The church needs to learn language the languages people that absolutely a number of understand. people consider relevant. Today, there, there is a lot of importance surveys surveys placed not recently, only in our diocese, recent years, but throughout to to the Episcopal Church and in other dom denominations throughout the that the languages we need to remember to when we talk the to people comes are not back limited to actual languages. That people don't. We need to consider things relevant. that people it find valuable, somehow, things that matter to people, speaking the right language. things that motivate we are people not these days are the, the languages we need to find of Jesus to help them find so the spirit of Jesus. What do we do? Well, the church needs to <laughs> learn know, the language the first Pentecost, that a number Pentecost, of people consider Peter relevant. This to the There's people of Jerusalem, very simply. Done. He said and over that recent years, they were hearing the to try to explain while explaining the story of Jesus Christ because the Protestant Jesus denomination was the seemed to be plummeting of the prophet. The answer comes back Joel. shockingly to many now, of us. I'm not sure if I went out relevant. to a Which Starbucks coffee shop. We are not speaking and the right said language. to a group of people, we ask are them, not. You know, are you involved in church? The true and they would say, no, not really. And I would Christ. say, well, you really should come because it's the fulfillment so of the prophet. So what do we do? Well, <laughs> you know, I'm not really sure that Pentecost, would have the Pentecost, desired result. Peter explained this to the people but of what Jerusalem. what maybe we simply. need to do he said is spend that time, they were for example, example, languages, taking Jesus explaining the story of Jesus to where Christ the because Jesus in was our the fulfillment so that we can listen the to their prophets. Needs. And Joel. try to connect them to now, services. Now, I'm not that might sure help them. if I went out. It may to mean spending an afternoon with an elderly person and said to a group of people, ask them that day. You know, are you involved in church? Maybe it means and volunteering. They would say, no, not really. And I would say, well, you really should be because it's the fulfillment to help the people and Joel. visit people in Northern Virginia. <laughs> I'm not Each really sure that would have the desired are ways result. To do just as the disciples did on that first but Pentecost. But what maybe we need their to do gifts of a is spend language. time, for example, we too can go into the streets message to and where speak God's the word together in the in language of the people so that we can listen there to their There are indeed countless and try ways to, connect them to speak the to message of Jesus so people hear it it in may a language spending an afternoon with an elderly action. person that they find who meaningful. would otherwise be alone that day. I believe all we need to do is Maybe take that first volunteering step. with one of the many the services Spirit that are available. We'll do the rest to help people and visit On people this in blessed Virginia. Pentecost. Each of these we pray in the name of our Lord ways to do Jesus just as the disciples Amen. did on that first Pentecost. Be a good idea with their gifts of a foreign purple language. today, for example. We too can go into the streets uh, and we speak also God's learned word where to stand in the language beside an the open grave so you don't there fall in while conducting a burial service to speak the 
message of Jesus. So we also you hear it how to hold a baby language, during baptism, or even in so it doesn't fall into they the find font. Meaningful. I believe all we, we were need also to do required is take for the first step. time to stand and behind Spirit an altar will do the and say the words of communion on this blessed Pentecost. Even though we knew it didn't count, we pray in the name will, of our it Lord. Wasn't, it wasn't Jesus real, Christ. real, Amen. because we weren't ordained. It was still a humbling moment to be approached with great respect and preparation. One of my classmates was from South Korea. When it was his turn, he read the prayer of consecration perfectly. Every word was pronounced exactly. Every inflection was placed where it was supposed to be. When he had finished, the professor told him, well done. And then he asked him if he would like to do the prayer again, this time in Korean. He did. And for those of us listening, it was a holy experience. The words flowed so beautifully and powerfully that it was clear that there was no mistake that the Holy Spirit was there with that student. He was saying the prayer in his own language, one he understood and was comfortable with which is exactly what happens when we give the gift of hearing the word of Jesus Christ in a language people absolutely understand. Today, there is a lot of importance placed not only in our diocese, but throughout the Episcopal Church and in other denominations, that the languages we need to remember when we talk to people are not limited to actual languages. We need to consider things that people find valuable, things that matter to people, things that motivate people these days are the languages we need to find to help them find the spirit of Jesus. The church needs to learn the languages that a number of people consider relevant. There's a lot of surveys done recently and over recent years to try to explain while, why church numbers throughout the Protestant denomination seem to be plummeting. The answer comes back, shockingly, to many of us that people don't consider church relevant, which means somehow we are not speaking the right language. We are not conveying the true love and glory of Jesus Christ. So what do we do? Well, <laughs> you know, on the first Pentecost, Pentecost, Peter explained this to the people of Jerusalem very simply. He said that they were hearing the languages explaining the story of Jesus Christ because Jesus was the fulfillment of the prophet Joel. Now, I'm not sure if I went out to a Starbucks coffee shop and said to a group of people, asked them, you know, are you involved in church? And they would say, no, not really. And I would say, well, you really should come because it's the fulfillment of the prophet Joel. <laughs> I'm not really sure that would have the desired result. But what maybe we need to do is spend time, for example, taking Jesus' message to where the homeless gather in our communities so that we can listen to their needs and try to connect them to services that might help them. It may mean spending an afternoon with an elderly person who would otherwise be alone that day. Maybe it means volunteering with one of the many services that are available to help people and visit people in Northern Virginia. Each of these things are ways to do just as the disciples did on that first Pentecost with their gifts of a foreign language. We too can go into the streets and speak God's word in the language of the people. There are indeed countless ways to speak the message of Jesus so people hear it in a language or even in action that they find meaningful. I believe all we need to do is take that first step, and the Holy Spirit will do the rest. 
on this blessed Pentecost. We pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.